Hey everybody, we pray that you've had a great week, a great month. We've been talking about love during February, but February is also Black History Month. Black History Month is that annual celebration of contributions that African Americans have made uh, to the United States history. And when we think about all the contributions of African Americans, the list goes on and on and on. Just in the world of inventions, we can look at potato chips and peanut butter, improvements to refrigeration and, and lighting systems and heating systems and cooling systems. There's so much that African Americans have contributed to uh, the United States. Uh, but the reality is that uh, as a culture, we as African Americans have not always gotten uh, favorable treatment and it's still a struggle as we seek equality and justice. Uh, but today we're going to look at the book of James and see what James has to say about treating other people differently uh, than we would another type of people. So let's go to James. So we're here in the book of James, and James is most likely the brother of Jesus. There's a lot of James in, in the Bible, but we consider the author of the book of James as the brother of Jesus. And the book of James has these short little wise sayings, words of wisdom. It's not like he's writing this letter that addresses this and this and this, but he's got so many ideas. And I love what he has to say about how we interact with other people. The world will tell us to treat other people differently or treat other people like they're not good enough, but that's not the godly way. So James 2 verses 1 through 4, my friends, if you have faith in our glorious Lord Jesus, you won't treat some people better than others. Suppose a rich person wearing fancy clothes and a gold ring comes to one of your meetings. And suppose a person dressed in worn out clothes also comes. You must not give the best seat to the one in the fancy clothes and tell the one who is poor to stand at the side or sit on the floor. This is the same as saying that some people are better than others and you would be acting like a crooked judge. So here, when James is talking about meetings, he, he's talking about church. He's telling church people not to treat people who may be different when they enter the church. What happens when we treat certain people different than others? How, how do you feel about that? How do you feel if this person is picked over you just because you guys may look different or uh, just because you may come from different households? It's not right. Uh, favoritism is, is, not, is not a good thing. And no matter what a person wears, we all should be treated fairly. Clothes, wealth, um, they're all mentioned in this particular Bible passage, but there's other ways that we treat people differently. So, so let's look at a couple ways that people are treated differently. Several words here, so let's think about them. Appearance, appearance. How do we uh, treat people who may uh, look different than us? Um, I think sometimes people may feel that they won't be accepted because of their appearance. I just read a, that article about that young boy whose haircut wasn't quite right. So people who may look different, uh, they don't deserve to be treated any less than anybody else. We need to treat everybody with love. Uh, what about ability or more or less think about not having ability like a disability? How do we treat people with wheelchairs differently? I was um, listening to someone talk. They were saying people always think that I'm helpless because I'm in a wheelchair. When in all actuality, people with abilities and disabilities alike are able to do things for themselves. They don't want you know people to feel sorry. What about origin? What if somebody was not born in this country? Um, and when we you know we're talking about Black History Month, you know, uh, black people as they came over here from Africa, they were not treated. Uh, so look at my own history. We have not been treated always fairly. And that goes to, to race and ethnicity, uh, treating people who may look different or have different races than us. Um, what about gender? Uh, treating guys like they're always going to be better than girls or girls like they're weak. That's another way that society uh, treats people different. Language. Um, the United States has all these different languages and, you know, different people from different co countries, but it seems like we cater to, to English and there's people who might need sign language or there's people who speak another foreign language. What about age? Um, older folks, uh, they may feel that, you know, people will treat them like 
They can't do things by themselves. And even younger folks may feel like people don't think they're responsible enough. Um, as we're talking about Jesus and belief systems, if somebody believes different than you, not everybody is going to believe in Jesus or Christianity, but it doesn't matter, you know, how people look or what they believe. Everybody deserves to be treated with love. All right, let's see how James closes that out as he talks about how God sees people that we may look down upon differently. God sees them high. You know, God sees all of us uh, with our potential and our image made in God. He doesn't see us based on our conditions or based on our parents or based on our money. God sees us, you know, out of love. And so let's see what James has to say. James 2 verses 5 through 7. James 2 verses 5 through 7. My dear friends, pay attention. God has given a lot of faith to the poor people in this world. He has also promised them a share in his kingdom that he will give to everyone who loves him. You mistreat the poor, but isn't it the rich who boss you around and drag you off to court? Aren't they the ones who make fun of your Lord? You will do all right if you obey the most important law in scriptures. It is the law that commands us to love others as much as we love ourselves. But if you treat some people better than others, you have done wrong. And the scriptures teach you that you have sinned. James here is essentially saying you treat people who don't even treat you good. You treat them better than you treat everybody else. How crazy is that? But what you need to do is you need to treat everybody with love. Uh, we've been talking about love is shown in your actions. And we should treat everybody with kindness and not look down on some people because they're different. We shouldn't look down on people because they grew up over here as opposed to growing up over there or they come from this neighborhood instead of that neighborhood. We're all worthy of the same love and kindness. Although we are different, we make up one human race. This word diversity, as we look at our differences, is a good thing. It makes us different than somebody else, but it also means that we have something to contribute. How would the world be if everything was the same? If we all looked the same, if we all talked the same, if we all acted the same, it would be boring. If everybody in basketball played the same position, they would all be the same height and it would it wouldn't be a fun game. So we need this diversity. We need these different gifts uh, to make the whole picture, to make up the whole world. We need each and every one of us. And because we all are different, we have something valuable to contribute. So let's take a moment to look at, um, just for fun, some differences. See if you can pick out some differences in these pictures. All right, which one is different? This is the title slide. So this one's going to be very, very easy. That red tulip stands out. It is different. What about here? Which one is different? You probably already saw it. It is that V <laughs> right there. Let's see. These first couple ones are pretty easy. Which one is different? I'm sure you saw that seat that stands out. That's the different color. What about here? Which one is different? One is not like the others. Yes, yes, yes. That right there in the middle. That squash is different. Let's see what else we got. Which one is different? A little bit harder. Do you see it? I'm going to give you guys a second. Some of you probably had already stood out. That Y right there is different. All right, let's see here. These are blueberries, so I... I I changed the color because one of them's not quite blue yet. Can you see it? Yeah, it's right there. Which one is different? I'm going to give you a second to look. Do you see it right there? That one is different. It's a more of a flower. All right, last one. Very, very hard. Which one is different? Which one is different? Now scan everybody. Hmm, everybody got on the same shirt, but who is different? Who is different? As you can see, we've got men, we've got women, we've got um, different races, different people of different ethnicities. We've got so much going on. This is diversity. This is a good thing. So it's so important that we are different. We don't all want to be the same. 
Uh, what could you imagine if we all look the same? It just wouldn't work out. And even the story that James is telling, he is the brother of Jesus, but he gets these words from his big brother, Jesus. So let's see how Jesus said these similar words in Matthew. We're going to turn to Matthew. Uh, Matthew, if you're flipping in your Bible, it's that first book in the New Testament, that very, very first book. And we're going to go to Matthew chapter five. And Matthew is written by a guy uh, named Matthew. Um, and he was one of Jesus' disciples. Jesus saw him. He was a tax collector. He wasn't, you know, a favorite of people, but Jesus said, you can be on my team. Jesus didn't care about his background or the work that he did. Jesus knew that he could do good things uh, for the kingdom of God. So he said, Matthew, come along uh, and, you know, be on my team. And, and so Matthew writes these words about what Jesus is saying. Jesus is in Matthew 5, speaking one of his most famous sermons, we call it the Sermon on the Mount. And he's, you know, essentially, you know, saying what James is saying, but Jesus, you know, said it first, and he's saying it in a little bit different way. So let's see what Jesus says in Matthew 5, beginning at verse 46. Matthew 5, verses 46 through 48, and it reads, If you love only those people who love you, will God reward you for that? Even tax collectors love their friends. If you greet only your friends, what's so great about that? Don't even unbelievers do that? But you must always act like your father in heaven. We don't get to pick and choose who we love, but we should love everybody. No matter how different we are, we need to love and accept others. God loves us all and we're all so different. Nobody's alike. And God loves each of us. So no matter our age, no matter our race, no matter whether we're male or female, we need to love one another. So let's celebrate our diversity. Let's celebrate our differences and let's celebrate black history. All the great contributions that African-Americans have given us. And so we want to celebrate all of this and our wonderful differences. Who wants to be the same? Everybody is different and there's so much we have to offer. So today I encourage you to embrace your differences. And when you see people looking down on others, speak up, you know, and be a friend to those people who don't have friends. So let us pray. Most gracious God, we just honor and thank you, Father God, not because of what you do, but simply because of who you are, God. You gave us the gift of diversity, yet we're all created in your image. How wonderful is that, God? Thank you for the contributions that everyone has given to our United States, God, and we thank you for African Americans and African American history, God, and we know that African Americans are still seeking opportunities of equality, just like many other folks, God. And so we just ask that you bless everybody, God, and you open our hearts that we may see other people, God, in your image, that we don't look down on people. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. And be blessed.